I've made the Las Vegas Tri Cities comparison many times on this show. I and I apologize if I apologize if I'm repeating myself. I'm Marky Bilson. Tri City Sports Now is the name of the program. I want to thank Jerry Bonkowski for joining me here earlier today. Uh, however, I also want to say this. Uh, there, I, I do want to mention what with fantasy sports blowing up, what with Chris Christie famously at the presidential debate and his line, let them play. And really, with fantasy sports being, yeah, you can tell me it's a game of skill all you want, but it's gambling. I mean, one can say poker is a game of skill. There are professional poker players out there. I have heard of some. I've met them. They reportedly tell me they make $75,000 a year. That's more than I'm getting, okay? I mean, it's... But it's a little bit different than blackjack. I mean, we'll give you that, okay? But again, nobody says poker isn't gambling. So gambling and sports, they've tried to, uh, you know, separate themselves for so many years. The NBA priding itself on being progressive. There's some advantages to that. And I got to give Adam Silver this credit. As much as I bash the NBA... Uh, he talked a little bit about the, the NBA is really getting into the idea of, you know, gambling. If we support this more, well, let's face it, it's probably just as easy to bet on a basketball game as it is a football game. Still the same way, you know, point spreads, all this. You don't have run spreads in baseball. Actually, I think they do, but it's just such a minor element of sports gambling, and nobody really pays attention to it. I know that there's a way it's done in hockey. I don't even pay attention to it, okay? I'm not a sports gambler. I, you know, have no money to gamble, okay? So there you go. But anyway... Here we go. Adam Silver said this over uh, the All-Star break. Any resistance from the gambling industry to the NBA's proposed 1% royalty, or as they say, integrity fee, got a nice name for everything, huh? If sports betting is legalized at a widespread level, is justified. And there is a lot of talk about sports betting being legalized all across the country. Now, of course, in Tennessee, we're like the last state. Maybe Utah. Does Utah have a lottery? I think Tennessee was the last state to actually have uh, a lottery. I think Utah may not, but everywhere else, you know, if it's not the last, then it's the next to last or so. I mean, check and see if Utah it does. But, uh, you know, pretty known to be conservative states, this sort of thing. So it may take some time for North Carolina, but, you know, Bristol, Virginia, Asheville, North Carolina, let's face it. They will, if they uh, do have... Legalized sports gambling in Virginia or North Carolina. There's going to be a lot of people that will be going there to watch the games. Be kind of good for us, some potential sponsors here for 1420 NBC Sports Radio Tri Cities, huh? Silver continued, said, we, This year we spend $7.5 billion creating this content, creating these games. What will come with legalized sports betting are enormous additional expenses for the league that go directly to integrity. I do think that if you have more widespread sports gambling, yeah, the leagues have to get in because they will have to have a filter. And although I think it's very easy to fix a college game, you know, we've had NBA referees paid off to fix games. Players, it's a little bit difficult to do. How are you going to generate a bet that'll make LeBron James think about shaving points with the money he makes. You're just not going to be able to do that. No bookie is going to be able to uh, afford to cover that bet, and Vegas will not cover that bet either. If you even tried to put something up like that, it'd take the games off the boards and have a Vegas in, uh, investigation. And see, I mean, So the idea of fixing a pro sports game has to kind of be done through officials, not through players, because they make so much money these days. You're just not going to have the 1919 World Series anymore. College sports, that's a little different animal, and it's happened many times, the shaving points and so many, and so often, uh, and, you know, it's happened, what, over in uh, Arizona, I guess Arizona State, uh, historically Tulane, I mean, historically CCNY, you know, I mean, there have been a lot of point-shaving scandals in college basketball, because you don't pay the players, they're easy to pay off. 
and uh, Vegas has to prevent to, to monitor itself. But anyway, that's a level right there where silver, I think, you know, being ahead of the curve on sports gambling, I, again, I think it's a great way to lose your money. You know, I'm not a huge fan of sports gambling. I have been known to play the ponies a little bit, you know, and all that. I think I put one game, I think I've bet one game in football in my life. Just, you know, not anything that I uh, look at. Maybe I did two or something, but uh, I tried playing poker once, lost 40 bucks. You know, just not a gambler, okay? And, uh, but that's me. But I also recognize the popularity of it. And let's face it, if the NBA would embrace gambling, their point spread and the way they do it, well, the NFL hems and haws, that's a way for the NBA to be the most popular sport in America. I don't know how long it lasts. I think that there's a, you know, an element of uh, thinking because where do you go from there afterwards? But you got to look at it. So I got to credit Silver for that. One thing, though, that could make the NBA, and the thing is the NBA does have a negative Q rating, and a lot of it is because of the culture of the sport and the way that, uh, well, the political battles it has. Uh, we all know LeBron James, Kevin Durant, they have, it says, NBA players, uh, Silver has defended NBA players for their stance on social issues. Possibly, but their social issues seem to be a lot of Trump bashing. Uh, there was an notoriety where Trump uh, used profanity, or excuse me, where James used profanity against Donald Trump, the president, uh, in referring to Trump. All right, I mean, you know, there's going to be some people that like that, and there are going to be a lot of people, especially around here, that don't. And that's what got the whole Laura Ingram, you heard all about this, saying, shut up and dribble. And Silver comes out and says, these players are not just basketball players, they're multidimensional, they care about their communities. And, of course, James cares so much about Cleveland, he'll go to Los Angeles after this year, right? I mean, you know. Uh, they cannot... They care enough to speak out, and then sometimes at great risk to themselves. Yeah, whenever you make a political statement, whenever you endorse somebody, you're going to divide. Uh, I got to watch out on that. I do make, you know, those statements. I try, and I uh, understand that, and I say what I believe in. I wouldn't be honest if I didn't do that. But there is a divide that can be created whenever you create and speak of something political. I get that. Silver cited Bill Russell, who is very intelligent. I mean, we all know that. Bill Russell's an icon. And he's also someone who has uh, embraced many political issues. For instance, the civil rights movement back in the 1960s when he was playing for the Celtics. He was present at Dr. Martin Luther King's I Have a Dream speech at the Lincoln Memorial. Here's the criticism of the NBA. How can you compare? cussing out the president, because you don't like his politics, you're free to do that. LeBron James, Kevin Durant, you're free to do that. This is America, okay? I will defend to the death your right to do that. That's what America's all about, fine. But how do you compare swearing at a president, let's just say a president, to attending the I Have a Dream Martin Luther King speech? This is where you go political and you lose half the people. That's the thing about the NBA. That's why it has the negative Q rating. It does. I see people with the bumper stickers saying boycott the NFL. A long time ago, a lot of people boycotted the NBA for just that reason. How can you compare cussing out a president? I don't care if it's Trump, Obama, Woodrow Wilson. To attending the I Have a Dream speech of Martin Luther King. You can't. Silver tried to do it. This is where he loses people. Anyway, and how about Fergie in the National League? I still haven't watched that the whole way through. I'm sorry. I know that, you know, the argument, I guess they said, boy, after listening to that, I could have had a cigarette, you know, or something like that. Sultry, soulful, whatever, you know, very criticized. I, I just, I, I don't, you know, I mean, this is the woman that sang Fergalicious. Come on. <laughs> how good is it going to be even if she does another rendition of it? You know, come on, please. Tri-City Sports now. Uh, I did, you know, we got the Olympic hockey, and boy, I you got two hours here, and we try to keep it local so often, and so the Olympics sometimes falls through. But there is a hockey game that you ought to watch tonight, and it is the quarterfinal rounds at 10 o'clock. The Americans taking on the Czechs. 
uh, to go to the semifinal, to go to the medal round of the Olympics. I'm looking forward to that. 5-1 uh, victory for the Americans last night. Uh, and, of course, the women will also be playing for their first gold medal since Cami Granado, Tony, the current coach of the USA men's hockey team, Cami Granado, uh, helped the, well, really starred for the American women to take the gold back in 98. There has been a, uh, but earlier in the week, last weekend, the uh, the Russians, what's that called, the Olympic athletes from Russia defeated the Americans for nothing, kept their starters in, and there was a big controversy because afterwards, the Team USA did not shake the Russians' hands. I love you, Tony Granato, for not succumbing to that pressure. There's nothing more phony than the post-game handshake. 